Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Brazil, Belgium, quarterfinal showdown. Brazil falls short. How did Belgium do it? Where did Brazil go wrong? And is this the system for Belgium to use going forward? Don't worry, here at the interviews, we've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're gonna break down Belgium against Brazil. Brazil, Belgium, quarterfinal at the World Cup. It doesn't get better than that. Everyone was expecting this Brazil side to go all the way, but they crash out at the quarterfinal stage to a Belgian side that had a lot to prove. How did Belgium do it? Where did Brazil go wrong? Well, when we break it down, we got Belgium on paper, supposed to be a 3-4-2-1. Lukaku up front, De Bruyne and Hazard behind them. They went with Mounier. And Chadley as wingbacks in midfield. They went with Witzel and Fellaini. Brazil 4 3 3, like we expected. Casmiro was suspended, which meant that Fernandinho dropped in to midfield with Coutinho and Paulinho. And up front, no surprises, no changes. William, Gabriel Jesus, Neymar. What went right? Well, the first thing we have to do is start with how Belgium approached the game. So on paper, there was supposed to be a 3 5 3 4 2 1, and they technically were 3 4 3 when they were attacking, which meant that Mounier would get forward, uh, Chadley would get forward, and what was different here was that we often had De Bruyne playing centrally, he sat on Fernandinho, you had Lukaku to the right, Hazard to the left. When they didn't have the ball, when Brazil recovered the ball, they dropped into more of a 4-3-3. What happened here is that Chadley shifted over, Vertonghen shifted over as well, Mounier moved into right back, and they dropped in like that. Very narrow compacts, ensuring that they dominate the center of the pitch, and that's how they went about their business. Why did they do this? Well, from an attacking standpoint, when they moved to the 3-5-2, the sense was that if Brazil were pushing men forward like we expected, well, we didn't expect them to do that, but they did push men forward. They dominate possession. What you have here is you know Marcelo's going to get forward, so that's obviously integral. So Marcelo does get forward down the left. When they shift into that back four, what happens is this. You see Fellaini drift over to one flank to help ensure that Neymar and Marcelo don't get the overload. Then they have Witzel dropping in for cover just in case. And then you have Chadley tucking in to ensure Paulinho doesn't make any late runs. Now what you have is that with the midfielders dropping forward, you have Lukaku with so much space down the left to break into if there's a counterattack, which forced Miranda to shift over. You have De Bruyne who is trying to find space in behind Fernandinho or get the ball ahead of him to lead a counterattack. And then you have Eden Hazard against the inexperienced Wagner. So that's where Belgium were trying to hit Brazil, and that's where they hurt them. Obviously, yes, their first goal was a bit fortuitous. It hit off Fernandinho and went in. But this was not the game for Fernandinho. This is why here at the interviews we thought perhaps they'd go with two men in the midfield just to ensure that uh, what we thought Mertens or Hazard wouldn't be able to drift into that space. Here, they had Kevin De Bruyne dominating that space, and we saw it in the opening stages when we had Fernandinho picking up the ball or chasing a loose ball. De Bruyne shoves him off, it breaks forward, fires a shot wide. Then there was another in incident in the left channel. And Fernandinho picks up the ball or he's trying to get on the ball. Lukaku gets it, runs by him with ease, breaks forward towards the box, ends up teeing up Eden Hazard, his shots blocked. But that's where they were finding a lot of the space. And that was the biggest problem because they're pushing so many men forward, Brazil, and then once they lose the ball, there's no one there to really stop the counterattack. De Bruyne will pick up the ball and then you have yourself most of the time 3v4, 4v3, and that is a big that was a big problem against these players who are so good on the counterattack. Against Mexico, they lacked the ability to finish the execution. Here, D Belgium made them pay. There were also some instances where you just saw where Fernandinho was unable to cope with the threat of Kevin De Bruyne finding pockets of space between the lines. There was one where Hazard picks up the ball. Fagner obviously follows him. Hazard's able to get away with him, get away from him. De Bruyne just slides into space right there. Ball is played into him. It doesn't really lead anything into anything, but it's an issue. There's one where De Bruyne drops off into midfield. Hazard combines with him. Then Hazard breaks free, runs past Fernandinho, runs past Coutinho. 
and then slides a pass into Lukaku. And what also was integral with Lukaku playing down that left was he was often looking to cut in. So that left space for Mounier to break into to offer another source of width because that play ends with Mounier ending, ending up delivering across with the box that should go to Lukaku, but it doesn't. And that was how Belgium really got them. We saw the second goal where it's Lukaku holding off Fernandinho, turning him with ease, running past Paulinho, De Bruyne's breaking in, slides it to De Bruyne, he fires his shot in and that was how Belgium really got at this side in the first half offensively there was always a threat on the counter-attack and that was a big issue you have to look at it from this element and more so in the second half when we get there you see Lukaku he barely beat Miranda 1v1 but what you always had was De Bruyne finding space ahead or behind a Fernandinho and you always had Hazard often getting the better of Fagner specifically with his back to goal Hazard would post up onto him Fagner would try not to foul he'd either turn him or ensure that his teammates came into play to link play with them before breaking into speed um, goal bound and that was pivotal and then if you ran 1v1 with him no one could stop Hazard on the day and that was big when we look at how Brazil went forward and what they did was here they are they drop into the four and the three and the 4-3-3 obviously you have the attacking players wide but look they're just so narrow and what happens here is that Coutinho is marked by Fellaini uh Chadley tucks in and he marks off Paul, uh, Paulinho so he can't run forward. You have Witzel sitting in and then if you even had any wide area, there's nothing really in the wide areas. Jesus had an awful game. Neymar couldn't get going. Neymar struggled against Mounier who was terrific on the night and they couldn't really break in. There was no space in behind. The intricate passing wasn't working. Belgium stayed compact. They defended in numbers and then when there was time to break, they had space. They positioned their players well and that was a big issue for Brazil. Not to say that Brazil didn't have chance in the first half, but they didn't execute. The corner kicks, Thiago Silva from point blank range the post you uh, Paulinho miss hitting a shot name um, you have Neymar trying to beat Vitzel pulling it back for Jesus Marcelo cross to Jesus nods it wide unmarked Belgium here weren't great when they were dealing with crosses or set pieces but Brazil's poor finishing let them off the hook second half Brazil make changes you bring on Firmino you bring on Douglas Costa, you move to a 4-4-2. Yes, there was a penalty shell, but here are the interviews. We're not going to get into that because there was more to the game than simply just a penalty shot. And Brazil did not lose because of that penalty shell. Yes, it was decisive. It could have been decisive. But you look at Brazil now, they have more of a threat. Firmino offering a bit more movement into spaces, in the half spaces. Neymar drifting out to the left. And with Neymar drifting out to the left, that means that Marcelo could break in. And Coutinho often stayed central, but he couldn't get his shot going when he was coming in from the left as well. And then what you have here is Douglas Costa was a main threat. Often going 1v1 against Vertonghen. Often cutting in and beating him. Firing shots on goal, but that wasn't enough. The pitch was a bit narrow. And still, there was always a counter-attacking outlet. And the problem with Belgium was that they weren't able to finish off their counterattacks, perhaps to tired legs, but Hazard was tremendous here holding off markers. Lukaku was trying to break in on Miranda, but he struggled in that in that aspect. And when they broke forward, it just wasn't enough, but it also led to Brazil counterattacks, which didn't help. Brazil, the final 20 minutes, they were better. They brought on Renato Augusto. He did score a great goal, just breaking in behind the defense. No one tracked his run. Cross goes into him. He nods it in. Then he gets another great opportunity when company uh, miss doesn't do well with his clearance. Falls to Coutinho. He finds Renato Augusto breaking in free. Should score him and the keeper. He's at the edge of the box, curls it wide. And then in the final stages of the game, you have two markers on Douglas Costa, beats them both, pulls it back to Neymar, Courtois makes a big save. But this was about the joint defensive and offensive plan set by Roberto Martinez in the first half. They countered superbly. They remained, remained compact in midfield to ensure that Brazil couldn't find space with their runners from midfield. Neymar had an off night. William didn't get going down the right. They made the changes. Firmino helped them out a bit. He was much better than Gabriel Jesus. Douglas Costa cutting in did help. But again, this is about Belgium. The switch from the 4-3-3 to the 3-5-2 to the 3-4-3 on the counterattack. De Bruyne found space behind Fernandinho. They couldn't cope with Hazard against Wagner. And Lukaku's run centrally did help. 
Belgium get over the line. But let me know what you guys think. Did Brazil get this wrong? Should Gabriel Jesus start it on the bench? And what about Belgium? Can they go on to win the tournament now? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget I upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And that was your daily dose of the interviews. Thank you.